Hi, I'm Jack Duell with jackinthenet.com and in this tutorial series I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro and all of its Element widgets. If you want to see what they look like then go to elementor2020.co.uk I've laid them all out for you so you can take a look at them. And to get Elementor Pro go to jackinthenet.com forward slash EP. There you'll be able to get the membership you want, download the plugin and then upload it to WordPress. By the time we finish this tutorial series, you're going to be confident in using Elementor Pro to make a beautiful WordPress website that gets you the results you actually want. So please like the video, make sure to comment and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. So in the last video, we took a look at the Elementor Pro post widget. In this one, we're going to be having a look at the portfolio. And you can do something very similar with this widget. So what we're gonna do is come under the Pro section, grab the portfolio, click and drag it on into the page. And immediately that, by default, drags through your blog posts. So if you don't see anything here, it's because you haven't got any posts. But I quite like this look. It's obviously focused very much upon the images, whereas this obviously is more upon the content. And you could choose whether or not you wanted to have the images on or off. So very similar like this, we can change the amount of columns uh, just as we did in the previous video. So we can have two, three, four, and whatever we choose, we can then change it for our devices. So the little icon here, if I click over to tablet, we can then take a look and we see that we've got two rows. If I wanted, I could just have the one, three, whatever it is that you want, and you can do exactly the same thing for mobile as well to make sure that it looks good. So maybe I still want two on a mobile. When you've decided, come on back over to the desktop view. You can choose how many posts you want per page. So I've currently got six. We could obviously change that. And you can also change the image size. I'm gonna leave it on medium. I think that's fine for when we've got three side by side. But if I just wanted to have the one showing, then obviously the quality is not that good. So at that point, I would obviously bring this up, make it a large image, and then we can see that's a lot crisper and clearer. So what you choose here completely depends on the amount of rows that you're gonna be showing off. You do also have the option for a masonry effect, which means that if you've got different shape images, for example, maybe some that are portrait rather than landscape, they won't all be in line. Now, if I turn this on, you won't see any difference because all of my images are 16 by nine. However, in the next video, where we look at the Elementor Pro gallery widget, I'm gonna be using lots of different shape images and we're gonna go into this in detail. Once again, we can change the image ratios if we want to, but I'm gonna leave them as they were. We can also hide the title, so you see that when I'm hovering over it, we've got the title of our blog post showing. I can turn that off, and then we just get the gradient overlay, or image overlay, sorry, it's not a gradient. But I'm gonna turn the title back on, and of course you can choose what heading tag you want that title to have. Next, we have a query. Now this is where you can choose which posts you want to show, or indeed if you want posts at all. We could have pages, and if we do that, you'll probably get something like this where you don't see any images. If that's the case, really simple solution. If I exit back to this page for a minute, at the back end, we see over here on the right, underneath the document settings, you have the featured image option. So make sure that you do this for all of your pages, set a featured image, that way whenever you share it via social media or anything, that image is gonna be pulled through. Uh, but also for what we're doing here, that's how you get those images to show up under the pages section. You've got a couple of other options here as well, manual selection, current query, related. But the one thing you're not gonna see is a portfolio option. This is quite annoying considering how this is the portfolio widget. If you're a photographer and let's say you wanted to show off, uh, I don't know, different types of shoots that you do. Maybe you do wedding photography and you also do, I don't know, family portraits, animals, nature photography, whatever it is. If you wanted to have a proper portfolio, then the only real way to do it with uh, Elementor is to create those each under their own page. Now there's not a problem with doing that, um, but if you do want a proper portfolio, there are plugins that can do it for you. There are themes that have it inbuilt. Astra's got a really great add-on, uh, WP Portfolio, but that is a premium plugin. I'm gonna do a separate tutorial actually showing you how to create a full portfolio. So I won't do that here because of course this is about Elementor Pro's default settings. For now though, I'm gonna go back to posts and just as we had up here when we looked at the proper posts element widget, you've got the option to include or exclude things, do them via a date range or a custom date range. You can order them via different means, for example, a random order, and that's obviously gonna change the order we see these in and again, have them ascending or descending. When you've chosen what you want, come on down to the filter bar, 
If we turn this on, we can then choose what, uh, what we want to filter this by. Because I'm using blog posts, categories make sense. So I have the one category, which is travel, which made sense for these example blog posts I did for this tutorial. But that's why we've got just the one option that's appeared up here. If I had lots of different categories, then you would see them all along the top. And I suggest you use that because it makes it easy for people to be able to get to the content that they want on your website. Now that we've done that, we can head on over to the style tab and now we can change the column and row gap. So at the moment, we've got no gap here. If I bring this up a little bit, maybe around five pixels each, we've now got some space in between them. We can change the border radius. So if I do this, you're gonna see that the corners curve on all of these images. If you want, you can unlink these and then I could always turn the bottom back to zero and the same with the bottom left. And now we've just got curves up at the top and flat at the bottom. So you can turn these into some interesting shapes. Below that, you have the item overlay. So at the moment, we're getting this sort of gray overlay and I really don't like that, especially since the typography is gray as well. It's difficult to see. So if I go to background color and let's say a light blue and I bring the opacity down, that's gonna make it fairly transparent. Now we've got that light blue and I can still see the image behind it. Maybe I want it a little less see-through though. That's better, I prefer that. Then you've got the color of the text. So I'm gonna switch this to white so that we can actually see it. And below that we have the typography. So I'm gonna make this bold, bring it up in size, maybe around 30, that's good. And I'm also gonna increase the letter spacing so that we've got a little bit more space there as well. Maybe 1.5, there we go. I like that a lot, but again, when you do this, make sure that you come on over and check what it looks like on other devices, especially mobile. If I switch over to that, I don't really like having two side by side. I would switch this back to one and then the writing is actually gonna fit. But if we wanted to, we could now go into the typography, change it for mobile, and it won't affect what we just did for desktop. So you can play around with that fully. For me, I do just wanna put this back to one column on mobile. And now that works a lot better for me. So let's go back to the desktop view. I really like that, I think it looks great. You can also style up your filter bar as well. So that's what we put just up here. You can change the color of your active and unactive categories. So if I change the active color to green, we'll see it changes to green. And let's make the other one be a blue. Come into typography and bring up the size, maybe around 20, I prefer 18. And then we are done. Okay, you can always come under the advanced tab, add a background if you want to. We'll just go with a single one for now. Choose the color that you want. I don't want one, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But when you've done that, you can come up under the advanced tab and then you can start changing the padding. So I could put in more padding at the top and more padding at the bottom. And then that means that if you do have a color behind it, it's not gonna be so cramped. So it would look more like that. The other final thing that you can do is make this full width. So at the moment, if we preview this, we see that it's currently in line with our widget above, which is what I personally like. But if you wanted, you can come up to the section settings, come over to layout, go to stretch section, content width, full width. And now if we look at this, we see that that's now stretching across the page from side to side. So that's it for the portfolio widget, but I really do like the way that you can create a post that looks a lot different or something that can link to other pages around your site. It's a really nice, useful feature to have. So that's it for this one. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use Elementor Pro's gallery widget. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope that it's helped you. Make sure to post any questions or suggestions that you've got in the comments, like the video and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.